much life, my life. Frugal diva style. Yeah, yeah. Frugal diva style. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Frugal diva. Frugal diva. What, what? Frugal diva. Southern Charities Bakery. Southern Charities Bakery. Yes, Dawns and Divas. Mm-hmm. Today is Friday, and I haven't done an official Friday rant in a while. So, yes, I have to get back into doing these Friday rants because of the simple fact that these uh, celebrities are really trying it. This is some fish market monkey shine bullshit. See who we're gonna start off with first. Let's start start off with um well um well um French Montana. French Montana, we know who you really are. Okay. Mr. Mr. French Montana. I am a bit confused as to how you were able to tweet this derogatory clapback, if we can call it a clapback. This derogatory clap, clap back to this woman. First off, the woman said something. Now, I'm not putting any uh, tweets up on here that people tweeted. Because, no, I'm not trying to get my videos uh, taken down or unmonetized and all that other kind of foolishness. So, I'm not doing all that. I'm going to go through. I'm going off my head. Okay, so, the woman tweeted something to the effect of, French man, who's checking for French Montana? Basically, like, who's checking for French, French Montana's career? She did not add him. So, that's telling me that, obviously, you're looking up your own freaking name. You are searching yourself. I don't know where... <laughs> But you searching yourself. Because how on God's green earth did you find this lady's tweet when she didn't even at you? You know, so I'm not I'm not understanding how that even played a part. And then you go on to call her nappy headed and and um come sucking and 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 uh, uh, you call to a whore and um, rotting too many um penises. You said the you know the the slang word, but I'm gonna say penises. Rotting too many penises. I mean, just going on about her edges, or or I think you said her edges, or something like that, or or, or something about her hair. Um, needing a perm or something. Or, I don't know. But first off. This is what I want to say about this, and this is the reason why I'm putting all of these, all of these three different things together, because it all goes into racism. Now, French Montana, when last I checked, you are not quote unquote white or Caucasian, you know, or you know, you you know what I'm saying? Like you you're you're not white. You are a minority along with m myself and many others. But this is what I want to say to not French Montana right now, but to other people who hang out with people like French Montana. They all, people say that we should get along and we need to get along and the black people need to get along with other people and black people need to embrace other people and give them hugs and whatever else and who, who, and Kumbaya and, and, and Scooby Doo and Hoopy Hoo and whatever else. But when you hang around someone long enough, 
another minority. I'm not talking about um. I'm not talking about white people at this time. I'm talking about another minority other than black. When you hang around another minority, a black person hangs around another minority long enough, their true colors show. They can't hold it. Oh my goodness! I gotta hold up. Wait a minute. Let them get the ambulance in it. Hope they are going to something that is not serious. Hopefully it's a force alarm because Lord knows I don't wish death on nobody. In any case, so like I was saying, as a black person, that's the reason why I'm really cautious about people who are not of my race. And I'm not just talking about a white, I'm, I'm not really just talking about white people. I'm talking about people who are of the of the minority race, the browners, the yellowers, the redders, the whatever. I, I'm, and you know, I, those are the people that I'm talking about. White people, you already, I already know, you know, easily off the top of, off the top. You know, if you racist or you got some racist thing going on with you, like, cause I could just feel, I could just feel by, 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 by certain things that you might say or whatever the case may be. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm excluding them at this point. I am only talking about people, other minorities, and black people who are hang, who hang out with other minorities. Look at what he went to. That woman did not say anything about his what is he persian or or what the heck what the heck is he or is that the kardashians that's persian what what, what the heck is he moroccan what, what the freak is he anyway um i think yeah i think he's moroccan so in any so in any case look at where he went to to say something about the say something about the woman you went to her hair that comes out of her head naturally that's what you went to you went to you went to that and called her nappy headed. Now I'm not into that whole good hair and, and and good hair and bad hair and nappy hair and this hair and that hair and all kinds of stuff. I wear my hair natural. Right now, this right here is a piece. I will tell y'all that no problem. This right here is a piece, but the rest of this is my hair. That's all this. I don't even got no gel or nothing in it. See that? I pushed it up and braided it. And made a little blunt. This is this this is my hair. This right here, this piece right here is not my hair. Okay. But in any case, and I have my my hair is natural. Now I wear wigs and I wear uh weed. Well, I really don't wear too much weed. But well, yeah, I guess I wear weed because this piece right here. But um more more likely than not, when I'm not wearing my own natural hair, I'm wearing wigs. But but in any case, the reason why I'm saying reason why I'm saying all this is because I am going to call a spade a spade. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna call a spade a spade. If you don't like it, you get in my comment section. You can say whatever you got to say, say whatever you got to say. But if you get too out of hand, I will block you. Not a problem. Now I'm going. I'm going to say this. From my experience, I'm not going off of other, other people's stuff. I'm going from my experience. So my experience. I have noticed that people, I'm not talking about white people because um, we already know the history back, you know, back and forth with black people and white people. We already know that. So I'm not talking about any kind, any, any white people. I am talking about people that are also minorities such as myself who are of, um, of Latino descent, who are of, um, what is this? Moroccan, Persian, whatever descent, um, you know, who are of um, Asian descent, uh, who are of East Indian descent, who are of uh, Native American descent. These are the people that I'm talking about, the minority people. Those are the people that I'm talking about. I have noticed, me, through my life, that... The people, no, I'm not going to try to be political. I'm just going to say what it is. I have noticed through my life that people that are of minorities tend to be more biased against blacks than even white people. 
They tend to be more biased against blacks than even white people. Now, when I say that, I know y'all might be like, oh, uh, what is this cool mess that she talking about? No, I'm not talking no cool mess because I know that there are racist white people out there. Yes, I know that. But I'm not talking about the racist white people. I'm talking about I'm talking about just the regular schmegular white um regular schmegular white white people. I tend to I'm going to be honest with you. I tend to get along with white people more than I tend to get along with certain not all, but certain minorities. And reason and reason being is because of the simple fact that for whatever reason, a lot of minorities have in their head that because they are not black, they are better than us, better than blacks. A lot of them tend to have that in their tend to have that in their head. I'm not saying all, but a lot of them I've come upon many that tend to have that in their head. So I know for a fact, you can get on my comment section say whatever you got to say, but this is my experience. This is me and my experience. So that is the reason why me personally, well I'm already married, but if I wasn't married, that is the reason why me personally, I'm not doing any swirls. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I wouldn't have no children with nobody that is not of my race. That's just me. And it's not because I am prejudiced. And you know, me being black, I can't be racist. There's no way possible for me to be racist. And you know, I could go into a whole nother rant about rant about why there's no way possible for me as a black woman to be to be able to be racist. I could be prejudiced, but there's no way possible for me to be racist. But in any case, I am not and I'm not I'm not prejudiced. I am not prejudiced. And I'm not going to tell you that I have many white friends. Because <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, a racist person. <laughs> That's one of the main things they like to say. I have many black friends. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have many black friends. You know, and that is also something that French Montana came out with. How could I be racist? My son is black. My uh my 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 girlfriend or my wife is black. What the heck do that mean? What does that mean? What that what do that got to do with the price of tea in China? What what? You're not black. You're not black. So I don't care if you have nine thousand children that are black. I don't care if you have a, a harem, you know, of, of concubines, <laughs> you know, in your harem that are black. That don't make you black. That does not make you black. So when people come out with, oh, I'm not racist. How can I be racist? I, I married a black man. I married a black woman. My children are biracial. What the heck does that mean? You're not biracial. You're not black. So what the hell does that mean? But in any case, like uh, like I was saying, getting back onto French Montana, like, sir, you really played yourself. You played yourself, and it don't even make no daggone sense. One, you played yourself because you showed you showed your true colors. So as much as you have a black son, and as much as have you you have a black wife, you know, as much as you have have these people um, in your life or have been, been in your life that does not make you black and that does not discriminate you from being racist. Okay? So don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Prejudice, don't, you know, don't go there. Don't even freaking go there. I don't care how long you lived in Africa. Don't go there. There's many, there are many white people who live in Africa who were born in Africa. You know? And I'm not saying because they was born in Africa, they automatically racist. What I'm saying is, is that there are many white people who lived in Africa, you know, and born, was born in Africa. And some of those, some of those people are racist. So what do that mean? I mean, you went to, you, you lived in Africa. What the freak does that mean? I'm going to get off of him and I'm going to move on to the next topic. Next topic. Do, no, I'm not going to do Donald Trump. Next topic, we're going to go into Kylie Jenner and Pepsi. 
Jenna? Some people saying you are confused. But you know exactly what you was doing. You were just looking for those ducats, baby. Mm-hmm. You really tried it. Have y'all seen the Pepsi commercial? If you have not seen the Pepsi commercial, I'm going to give you the gist of what happened on the Pepsi commercial that they have now pulled. You have a whole bunch of different people. It starts out with a whole bunch of different people from different nationalities and races. And they're like artists, you know, they, you know they're, they're artists. They're people who are doing photos and taking pictures and music and all that kind of, all that kind of great artistic stuff. So they get fed up or whatever the case may be. For whatever reason, they get angry, they get fed up or whatever about And they go out to the street and they, they, start, they start marching and, pro, and protesting. What they're protesting, I have, the absolute, I have no freaking clue of what they're protesting because the, 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 the uh, commercial, it, I mean, it just don't. They have a 30-second commercial that they play. I forgot where they play it at. But then they have the whole two-hour, I mean two-hour. <laughs> Two minute and 43 second commercial that they played on YouTube. And I watched the full YouTube one on the YouTube in its entirety. That's how I'm able to give you the whole kind of like rundown of what they were. I don't know what Pepsi was going for in this. So in any case, yeah. So they out in the street and they're, they're marching or protesting or whatever it is that they're doing. So then they, then they pin and go to um, Kylie Jenner. No, not Kylie. Kendall. Kendall. I'm, I'm getting them mixed up. Kendall Jenner. And she's doing a photo shoot. I guess uh, I guess that's the realm of artistic or, or, or artisticness. I guess that's her artistic part. Because I, cause like I said, all the other people were doing something artistic. So I guess that's her artistic part of her being a, you know, doing a photo shoot and being a model. So she's doing a photo shoot, doing a model. She's got blonde hair. And she's, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Taking a little shots. And these people are walking by doing their march or protest or whatever it is that they're doing. She locks eyes with a man who I am saying is either uh, maybe Native American or maybe of Latino, Latino descent. He's a brown, he's a brown skinned man. Handsome man, might I add. A uh, brown skinned man. And they lock eyes and he, he sees her, she sees him, and he gives like the head nod of approval or whatever he's doing. And then she she takes that head nod in, which I thought that they were like flirting with each other or maybe like uh, you know, uh, I don't know what the heck, and, and I don't know what the heck they were doing. I, but I just thought they were flirting. I didn't know. But anyway, the next thing you know, she's walking out of her photo shoot, and she takes off the uh, the blonde the the the, the uh, blonde blonde wig. I don't know exactly what that was supposed to be symbolizing. I don't know if what what what, what Pepsi was going with that. Maybe they were trying to say be natural. I I, I don't know. I, I don't have the faintest freaking idea where they was going with that. But anyway, so she takes off the blonde freaking wig, and after she takes off the blonde wig, she rubs off her uh, rubs off her um, uh, her makeup makeup, you know, her lipstick or whatever the case may be. She rubs that off, and she walks out, and she uh, gets into the march. And then at some point, she does a fist bump with a man who I think is a a, a, a black guy, who's also a nice looking guy too. I um, mean, you know, bump, uh, does that fist, does a fist bump or however the case may be. And and then next thing you know, she's got a Pepsi in her hand and she's walking a flat behind. Up to <laughs> I can't know I shouldn't have said that flat behind. <laughs> well, she's walking herself up to police officers who have a big old barricade so that the protesters or marchers or whatever the heck that they're doing can't get pe get can't get past. And she walks up to one of the police officers and she gives him. A Pepsi and she gives him the Pepsi he takes the Pepsi he drinks the Pepsi and it's like uh, an approval and then they start mark they start cheering and pumping their fists like like as if she did something uh, spectacular or miraculous Pepsi what the heck were y'all doing I, I, I'm confused at what, what were y'all doing were y'all trying to say that 
giving a pe- a giving an officer a Pepsi is going to uh end uh end um racial profiling? Are you saying that it's going to make harmony amongst uh um all all of the races? I, I don't understand what, what Pepsi. What were you What were you doing? And of all the people to pick, y'all picked. Kai, uh, I keep calling her Kylie. Kendall. Y'all pick Kendall Jenner. I don't re- ever remember freaking Kendall Jenner doing any kind of real uh, protest against against anything of any real substance. I don't really remember that. Someone uh, so, so, someone did tell me, or whatever the case may be, that, oh, you know, she's, she's, um, behind, she, she, um, is, um, is in the what is it the woman's movement or something like that? I don't know what the heck. But I'm like I don't. I don't I, okay, what I'm saying is when I look at Kendall Jenner, I don't see freedom fighter. Like that's not what comes to my mind when I see Kendall Jenner. Freedom fighter does not come to my mind. You know, liberator does not come to my mind. So her going up to the police officer giving her a Pepsi was like, what the. And then Pepsi pulled, and like I said in the beginning, Pepsi pulled the ad. You want to know why Pepsi pulled the ad? Because that was the most idiotic, stupidest ad I have ever seen. I don't know what the heck they were thinking. They don't even know what the heck they were thinking. I, You know what I want to see? I want to see the people who were actually behind the whole marketing and, and and put this whole marketing idea together to make Kendall Jenner the voice of reason between the turmoil that is going on in different communities. I, I that's what I want to know because have, if I haven't told y'all, I am business major, minor. I'm a business major, concentration in marketing. Marketing minor in biblical minor in biblical studies. This May I will be getting my master's degree. I and marketing is really my thing. So I want I wish I was a fly on the wall inside of that room just to see the dynamics in that room because I know I just know I just know in my heart and soul that there could not have been that many people of color in that room for this this freaking commercial to have come out. I know that couldn't have been possible. It had to be like 80% white with maybe 20% or 10 90% white with maybe 10% black. That's what the ratio had to be. It had to been it had to been 9 to 1 ratio. Nine white, one minority. It had to be. Because there's no way on God's green earth that if there was an overabundance of minority or even a middle ground of minority, that this commercial would have made it off the cutting room floor. It's just no freaking way possible. Because it didn't make any daggone sense. It made no sense whatsoever. You know what this reminds me of? This freaking reminds me of the uh, time when the little boy and it went viral. The little boy he um had the um he had the uh, the little um cardboard the little board the board and it said um that he was giving out free hugs or whatever the case may be. And then he went up to the uh, and then they had another picture where he went up to the police officer. And he was, um, and, and you know, he was hugging the police officer. But that little boy, when you looked at his face, he was so destroyed. You know, tears coming out of his eyes and things like that. And he was so freaking destroyed. And when you went and you actually did your due diligence of research, come to find out his pe- he was adopted. His parents were both white. His parents were the one who put him up to be uh, that his parents were the ones that put him up to going up to that uh going up to the officer and giving them you know giving them a hugs hu- giving them hugs so he was crying and scrub because he didn't want to do that because he was a young black 
male who is going to a police officer where he sees on TV and everywhere that police officers are either beating the hell out of or killing, macing, just doing just all kinds of craziness. And I'm not saying this is what all police officers do. I'm saying what the media shows and the portrayal of the police officer in the media, which the media, which is is perpetuated by we're not gonna go into all that. It's my conspiracy theories right now. I'm not I'm try I'm gonna try to hold back on my rants of conspiracy theory. Keisha, hold back. Okay? I just said my real name. Well, not my full real name, name, the name that people tell people call me. It's not my actual real name. But anyway. Hold it back. Don't go into your conspiracy theory rants. Try to hold back. Try to act like you have some common sense. Because Bellevue is still open. So I'm going to just try to act like I got some common sense. Huh. Like I said, not all police officers, because I have many family members, many friends, you know, many people who are, I don't know, from a can of paint or a hole in the wall, that are police officers who I know for a fact are not out there just trying to beat the hell out of um, black people as a whole. I know that. But we are, I'm talking about the ones that you see on the media with the media is pep, pep, uh, perpetrating and not perpetrating. What word was I looking for? Right now I'm having a brain fart. That the media is... Oh gosh. I'm having a brain fart right now. Maybe because I'm trying to hold back and I'm not trying to give y'all my conspiracy theories. But in any case, like I said, that the media is show, the media is showing the propaganda that the media is showing. He is he saw he's seeing that this is what he is seeing. So yes, I can understand why he was crying and had tears in his eyes and looked very angry and frustrated that he had to go and hug this police officer because when when young black men go up to police officers, it normally isn't for a good thing. And they sometimes they don't come back alive. Sometimes they come back beaten within an inch of their life. You know, so these are the things that these are the things that they are showing in the me media, perpetuating perpetuating the violence. And this is what they're showing in the media. So I can understand that. So like I was saying, I went off on a whole tangent rant about the little boy, but bringing it back to the whole pe the whole Pepsi thing. Pepsi, y'all tried it. Then there are people who are saying that this is the worst thing that Pepsi has ever done. I'm looking at all the memes. Some of the memes is funny as I don't know what. But um, they're saying that this is the worst thing that Pepsi has ever done. No, this is not the worst thing that Pepsi has ever done. I don't know how old you are. And also, this commercial I'm thinking was speaking to the millennials and not people that are in my age range and up more of the millennials people that like in the 25 age range and down because that is um Kendall Jenner's uh plat uh, not platform but that's Kendall Jenner's uh population that she normally um gets in the one and the ones that normally that normally gravitate towards her you know people that are 25 and down, 25 and down so in any case, what I was what I was saying was is what was I oh what I was saying was is I was talking about the fact of people saying that this is the worst or whatever case may be. No, this is not the worst. Let me tell you, Pepsi's done some uh, some crazy things, but this is this is the one that I believe is the worst because you actually you 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 actually uh, destroy part of this man's body, Michael Jackson. S.I.P. Michael Jackson. Sleep in peace. R.I.P. Michael Jackson. Rest in peace. But I don't know if y'all remember back in um, the middle to late 80s, Michael Jackson did a commercial. And, in that, and it was for Pepsi. And he was a little bit too close to the lights or, or the lights were a little bit too close to him. And it actually burnt his hair. I mean, literally burnt out 
his hair. So where he had to be wearing wigs and stuff like wigs and stuff like that. Now there are some people that say that um that was when he started taking pain pain pills. So there are some people that blame Pepsi for his spiral out of control with you know over medicate over medicating himself. Now I'm not saying that. I'm you know I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not in any way saying that that's what uh, Pepsi Pepsi did. I'm not saying that I agree with that. All I'm telling y'all is the things that people have been saying. But in any case, that happened in, and I know for, it happened in, I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was 1984. Either 84 or 85. Reason why I, um, I know that is because I was still in elementary school when, um, when, when that happened. I was in elementary school when that happened. And we used to have this little song, and I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say the uh, I'm not gonna say the song here on on camera, but I will write the song in the comment section. That as a little kid that we used to that that we used to um, that we used to sing. We used to think it was so funny, but in or actuality, honestly, and honestly wasn't. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the song lyrics in the comment section, but I'm not gonna say the song one thing. Just because I do not want to be disrespectful to the Jack to the uh, to the Jackson family, and I really truly loved Michael Jackson. Like I know y'all might say, how could you love somebody you didn't even know? But I mean, I oh my gosh, I really really loved Michael Jackson. Uh, I'll tell y'all really quick 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 story. When I was in elementary school, there were two teams. There were t there were people that were Team Michael, Team Michael Jackson. And then you had the, um, because in my school it was pre predominantly um, blacks and Hispanics. So, um, blacks and Hispanics, and primarily Hispanics meaning of um, Puerto Ricans. So, we had, you had team, you had team Michael Jackson, team Michael, or you had team Menudo, Menudo. And I mean, when I say Team Michael, Team Menudo, like, we went hard. We went hard. I had a Michael Jackson jacket, you know, the Thriller, one of the Thriller jackets. I had the red one, the red Thriller jacket. I had a little bag that was plastic, and it had Michael Jackson on it from his Off the Wall, Off the Wall, Off the Wall album. Uh, Menudo, you, you, could get a, you could get one of those cut off, uh, cut off um, ja jackets, jean jackets that cut off that Menudo and stuff used to wear. And say Menudo on the back if if you was Team Menudo, and then they also had um the little plastic um it was shaped kind of um shell shell shape. You know how shells and door knockers back in the back in the day. I know some of y'all don't have no idea what I'm talking about because you know y'all may be of the younger generation, so y'all might not know. But I mean, door knockers have come back have come back out even if they come back out and they plastic or whatever the case may be. But big old earrings that I used to wear too. But big old earrings, they had door knockers, and then they had also the real big ones called, they were shells. So, like, see how my earring is round? It was like that, like a, like a round shell. And the reason why it was called shell, because it was in a shape like a, uh, what is that? Clear, like a clam shell. Or, 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 or you know, wait, is it clam shells that the pearls come in? I don't know. Tell me in the section. But anyway, it was shaped like a shell, like a like a clam shell. So that's why they called it a shell. And they had the indentation and all that kind of stuff, like shell. But the bag was pla the black the bag was like a plastic, not really pla yeah, it was plastic. The bag was like a plastic, and it was like a thin rope, uh, thing that you could just put around your thing, and it and it zipped and it zipped up, but it was shaped kind of like a shell. It was shaped like a kind of like a shell form. Yeah, I'm really really giving y'all all my age. And, it's, and it had Michael Jackson on it. Or if, like I said, you would see Menudo. Um, they had Menudo on it. So that was what it was about. Oh. It, <coughs> who was in Menudo? Ricky Martin. Now, y'all know who Ricky Martin is. Ricky Martin was one of the people that was in uh, the group, the group with uh, Menudo. So in any case, yeah. Living la vida loca. Mm, living la vida loca. But anyway, yeah. So you was either Team Michael or Team uh, Team Menudo, and if you was Team, and then I did also had a um a book, a um composition style book with uh, Michael Jackson, 
with Michael Jackson on it, his Off the Wall album. And I also had the Off the Wall al- um Off the Wall All album. My um cousin gave it to me for my birth cousin gave it to me for my birthday. You know, with Michael Jackson, he had on that he got on that white suit. He got on the black he got on the black shirt with the white suit. And you know he 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 laying like this, you know, on the side, right? Uh, whatever. So in the case <laughs> I'm just all over the place. Let's get into Donald Trump. Donald Trump, Putin, protector, mm-hmm. more like overseer. You think you owns me? I don't think so. And let's get into it really quick fast. The reason why I took so long on those two things, because I really don't want to even talk about Donald Trump. Because he's going to be in the news for like ever ever in 10,000 days he is uh he is now the president of the United States this is going to be in the news all the time what i'm going to say is this Donald Trump is trying to take y'all to war that's what he's doing he's trying to take y'all he trying to take y'all to war the reason why i'm saying he's trying to take y'all to war okay i only have one i only have one son so you know, God forbid a war break out. They not taking him unless he decides that he wants to volunteer and and, and um go to the and go to the um sign up for the um armed forces. But if he don't decide he wanna volunteer, they can't take him because you know they got that law, you know, because he's the only he's the only boy. So he has to you know, he has to um li- you know, have the name have the name live on. Now my husband, I ain't got to worry about him being taken because he's over the age of thirty, over the age of thirty-five. So I ain't got to worry about him, him being, ta- him being taken. So that's why I said, y'all, you know, my immediates, my immediates is covered. So I, you know, hey, I just, you know, it is what it is. So if he take us to war, I feel sorry for your second, for for your second born, for for um second born sons. I feel sorry. Also, a very, very light tidbit note before I say the last part of what I wanted to say about Donald Trump and, and the Syria, Syria, Syria and, um, and Russia. Did y'all know that the president of the United States cannot become president unless he is over the age of 35? He's 35 or older. Do y'all know the reason why? Going back into war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Anyway, so um, going back into going back into war. If you are over the age of thirty five, they can't uh they 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 can't draft you. Like say for instance, if a draft happened, war, they can't draft you. So that is the reason why the president has to be over the age of thirty five or thirty five or older, because. He, even though he's the president of the United States, which at some point, hopefully, we're going to say, even though she the president of the United States, it's coming soon, it's coming soon, y'all. Even though he is the president of the United States, he's not exempt from war. But he is exempt from war because he's over the age of 35. And they can't draft you if you're over the age of 35. That's, that's the reason why the president has to be 35 and older to even try to run for um to run for office. That's one of the stipulations. But that was just a side note, little little uh little font, because I am a font of information, little little tidbit fact or whatever. So now back to what I was saying with um Donald Trump. Donald Trump really in Syria and Russia, all I'm gonna say is this. And this is for us, what I'm getting ready to say is this is for all of us in our everyday lives, Dons and Zebras. When someone says they are going to protect you, what they are really saying is they own you. That's what they're really saying. They are really saying they own you. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of that because I know y'all like, what the heck is she talking about? Okay. Let's go into Pimps Up. Holes down. Okay. What is the thing that the pimp is always telling the hoe? He is here to protect her. 
He is her protector. Now, what does the what does the pimp actually believe in his head that he owns her? Once again, listen to what I just said. He always tells the hoe that he is her protector. He is there to protect her. That's why she got to give him the money because he is there for her protection. But what he is really saying and what he is really thinking in his mind is that he owns her. Now, Let's go back into back into the day, back in the day of marriage. Back in the day, marriage, when a woman got married to a man, he was her provider. He was her protector. And what was she? His property. He had ownership of her. That's the reason why women had to fight for their rights. White women had to fight for had to um fight for their had to fight for their uh their rights. Because they were considered property. That is the reason why a lot of issues and things going going on still going on to this day in different in different countries because we have men, misogynistic men, who still feel that women are their property. They are their protectors. They are their providers. So that makes them property. That's all I'm going to say about that. So when someone says that they are here to protect you, understand that what they really mean and what they're really thinking is their hand, head is that they are the owners of you. You are property. Okay? The government is always talking about protection. But what is the government always doing? Getting into everybody's freaking business. Want to know why they're getting everybody's freaking business? And feel they can't get in everybody's freaking business? It's because they feel that they own you. That you are their property. But they are saying they are here for protection. So, with that being said, dogs and divas, don't just willingly give away your being to be falsely protected, a.k.a. become property. And that's all I got to say about that. Dawns and Divas have a frugal Diva Day. Hey, Dawns and Divas, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. But if you are subscribed, make sure your notifications bell is turned on. And we now have the Frugal Diva Style Bath and Body Work Products subscription box. So check out the website, www.frugaldivastyle.com.